Hey guys, well, as promised, I'm going to go into some more detail on the machine this time and the software. You'll have to excuse me, I'm a bit bunged up, I've got the flu. So, uh, the idea is today that uh, I'll walk you through some of the stuff in the LXCAM software and we'll look at how the machine operates. Um, this is not the fastest laser engraver in the world at the moment. Um, we'll also look at a plugin that will allow you to do uh, a profile cut, um, which I haven't completely worked out yet, but uh, I'm, I'm you know, playing around with that to, uh, to see how that works out. So that'll give you a, a bit of an insight on how to run the LXCAM software uh, that is made for this board, and also uh, how to uh, use that plugin. So the first thing to be mindful of with this software is that it's meant for engraving and not for cutting. So as you you know get your image here that you want to engrave and set up the uh, the type of engraving that you're going to do, uh, you'll notice that it's got a couple of different methods of doing that. Now um, the machine's down in the shed. Um, I'm in the office and I won't be able to hook up to the machine while I'm doing this demo but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a series of files and then we'll put those in the machine and watch how it operates. So um, I know that all of the files in this uh, library will work so let's start by picking this. So I just double click on the image and what happens is that regardless of the size of the image the uh, software decides that it's going to make it 20 by 20 roughly so the extents of the image aren't going to go beyond uh, 20 millimeters which is fairly small. So at this point in time you know you have to uh, decide uh, how big you want this. So I'll just go 60 by 60 and that's good. Uh, next in here we've got a speed setting. Now this is going to depend on the output of your laser. My 5.5, not even running at full tilt and it's perfectly happy to do um, most of these engraving styles um, at double this speed. So that's something you'll have to uh, work out for yourself um, and it's usually a bit of trial and error. Um, the software doesn't give you uh, all of the information that you'd probably like uh, but you know it's free so I'll just leave that as is for the moment and then let's have a look at this area here the mode area and if we change some of the one of these radio buttons uh, you'll see that the uh, options down here change as well so first of all we look at um, what it defaults to which is uh, which is scan mode so it will generate that and here we have it on the crosshairs that indicate the zero point of the uh, of the machine so we'll go back to control and if you look down here at where it says set home coordinate down here on the bottom left hand corner we can set the home coordinate to the center or any of the four corners i think it's wisest to leave it in the center and then when you set your zero you run the uh, laser to the middle of the travel in x and y and hit set zero and that will then set up your uh, zero point now I've zoomed right into this image and now we can see what the laser is going to do with this image. It's going to fire the laser at each one of these points, which means, boy, is this slow. <laughs> it really is. It, you can produce quite a good outcome with it, but it's pretty slow. So what I'll do now is I'll generate this file and then we'll run it on the machine and I'll show you how it works. So as you see, this method is a fairly slow process. It's firing the laser in two millisecond bursts, and you can see that it is following the raster that's been generated by the file, but this is a slow process. This whole thing ended up taking well, the best part of two and a half hours to finish, and this is just that 
image, 60 by 60 millimeters. So this is the result of a scan etch and I've just got this on a piece of plywood here and I don't know if you can pick this up. This is etched quite deep into the plywood. I would probably be able to ease off the power a bit there but uh, you know it doesn't make any difference to how long it takes and going dot by dot like that just does take a fair while. So I'm going to do another one now in one of the scan modes where it does lines instead and I'm expecting that will probably not cut as deeply as this. So this is a lot more like I wanted my laser etcher to work. As you can see now, the transport moves left to right, right to left, and each time it energises the laser for the full length of that travel. This is a lot faster than the previous method. I think this took less than a quarter of the time of the previous etch. Okay, here's our next etch, and just compare the two. This one's a little bit cleaner on the edges than, than this one, but boy, a huge difference in the time it took to actually complete. Um, and you saw the uh, laser was just going, um, it was just going across, uh, stopping, and then re-energizing and going back again I didn't have it so that the lines were folded so um, not a huge amount of difference there this isn't a particularly good material to cut um, the surface is a bit soft um, but anyway we'll move on to the next method alrighty then it's time to do the third method of engraving and this time I want to create a path that the laser is just basically going to draw an outline of all the black areas. And for this I'm going to use the extension in Inkscape. So I've got my image here, and the first thing I have to do is convert it to a path, which will make it into a vector diagram or vector picture. So I go to Trace Bitmap, and I can leave all these controls where they are because I've got a nice high contrast black and white image. The most important thing I want to do is tick this box here that says Remove Background. Okay, when I click OK, I've got my trace. So now we've got the trace, which is in vector format, and the original image. I usually delete that out of this file, just to keep things straight. So there we are with our vector, and you can check that it's a vector image by clicking on this tool up here, which is um, the node editor, and now you can see all of the... Uh, all of the paths here we'll just go right in and these are the nodes and you can see they've all got bezier handles on them so now this image is ready to put through the extension so i'll go into here and here's the lx maker tool and we just want to go with straight g-code output not filled g-code now from my experience before um, or my experience using this um, i know i can go to about half power for the material that I've got and I want to do zero repeats I'll just go around once with this so that's the repeat it says repeat speed but it's actually number of repeats I'm going to change the name of this so that I know what it is and you've got to make sure that it's got dot nc on the end of it here or else uh, the um, LX maker software won't be able to find it so it's going to go to C slash output, so that's a folder called output in the root of the C drive. Click apply, and hopefully, we don't get any. Uh, that's right, no warnings, that's good. And 
what the plugin is showing us now is the direction the laser is going to be taking on each pass. So there's a bit of information there. There's not much you can do with this. This is just a visualization. So let's go ahead and cut this vector trace. That's not too bad. I, uh, I bumped the speed up to uh, 2000 millimeters a minute just to see how to go. Uh, that's at full power. Probably could be eased off a little bit. Not fabulous detail there, but uh, yeah. you know, it's all part of uh, you know, just tuning the machine in. Another option in the Inkscape extension is to generate what's called fill-in G-code. Let's have a look at that now. So creating fill-in G-code is a two-step process using the LXMaker extension in Inkscape. First thing we do is generate the fill-in code and we have a, a range of values here which uh, I'll just leave at the defaults and if we click apply when that's finished, and I just close this, if I go back to the um, to the vector editing tool. You'll see that we've got a lot more vectors here than we had before. So, if we now go back to the extension and generate the actual G code output, click apply here. Now, this is going to take a little while um, because the <laughs> you can see the vectors are very thick on the ground out there compared to how they were and that now is giving you this really tight sort of pattern here which is going to scan these lines in at 45 degrees should be really interesting to watch this one carve actually So what happened there? I'll just get this off. Uh, you might be able to pick up the um, the crosshatch in this, but something weirds happened with it. It's flipped part of the image over. Might have to do a bit more experimenting with that. Okay, so that's it for this video. Hope this has given you a bit more of a inside look at uh, how to run one of these you know basic laser engraver things i've tried cutting some stuff i've had some successes and some failures and i might show you those in a subsequent video um, this was, one was more about running that um, alexcam software so uh, thanks to everybody that subscribed to the channel um, i really appreciate that and i really appreciate questions and any feedback and uh, so until next time, it's onward and upward.